friends, welcome back to my channel. I guess you're wondering why you're not seeing my face right now. And yes, the truth is the flu has hit our house, so I am not going to be showing my face in the intro today. But today's recipes are perfect for this winter that we are having because they are winter warming recipes that are going to warm you up from the inside out. So let's get into it. First up, I am going to be making chicken pot pies. I absolutely love making these during these cold months and it's something about a chicken pot pie that just makes us feel all warm inside, right? So I am going to be making two pies here. So you can always half the recipe if you're only making one. So I am just going to be cooking about two pounds of chicken in the Instant Pot. And over to my cutting board, I am going to be dicing up four stalks of celery, four carrots, and one large yellow onion. And then over to our stove, of course, we need some butter. So I've got about five tablespoons of butter here. Just melt that in your pot and then we're just going to cook up our onions, carrots, and celery and season them with a little salt and pepper and cook them for five to seven minutes or until they are nice and tender. Next up, we're gonna add two thirds a cup of flour and cook that for another minute or two until that flour is nice and incorporated. Now we're gonna add in four cups of chicken broth and one cup of half and half or regular whole milk. Give that a really good stir. Another fun variation of this recipe is that you can make it a soup. It doesn't only have to be a pot pie. Now, of course, let's add in our chicken, give this a good stir, let it come to a nice low simmer. You're helping me do that time, taking off. <laughs> Yeah, take it off. Take them off the uh, stem. You could do it. Remember how I showed you? Take the leaves off. Good job. So my daughter was awake while I was filming this at like 9 o'clock at night, so I figured I would use her for the video and she got so excited. So anyways, I am putting in about a tablespoon of fresh thyme and once you see this gets nice and thick and you can run your finger down the middle of your spoon and it stays separated, your filling is officially ready. I did season it um, to taste, so I added in a little more salt and actually a lot more pepper because it definitely needed some extra pepper in this amazingly huge recipe. Um, so then I am just going to add in about three quarters of this bag of frozen peas, give that a good stir and incorporate everything and then let it cool down for a little bit. And then I am using these pie crusts. I am taking a shortcut because like I said, this was late at night when I was doing this and I was so not in the mood to be making a real pie crust. Um, so these are from Aldi's and I love these nine inch deep dish ones. So of course, just put your chicken pot pie mixture inside and then we're gonna top them with our regular pie crust that you get from Aldi's or any grocery store. And then just put them on top and as you're putting them on, just push down on the sides. This way it sticks to the other dough. Um, and then just kind of, you can use your knuckle and your thumb to really make like a pretty edge, but honestly, whatever you want. I love the rustic look as well. So I'm gonna do that to both pies and then trim off the excess dough. course, make sure that you are cutting at least three or four little slits in the top of the pies. This way, any steam can be released. At this point, if you wanted to brush it with egg wash to give it a nice browning top, you can do that as well. Just cook it in your oven at 375 for 20 to 25 minutes or until the top is nice and golden brown. This is the finished product. I actually took this to work with me because everybody at my job was asking for chicken pot pie. So I figured I need a video, so why not? And it was so good. Everybody loved it. It was such a fun recipe for me to make and to bring everyone. 
Next up, we're going to be making Spanish potato and rice. This recipe kind of just came to me out of nowhere. I was kind of craving picadillo, which is very similar to this, and I kind of just threw it together and it was really good. So uh, over to my cutting board, I am going to be mincing up three cloves of garlic. I'm only using half of a white onion and dicing that, and then about a cup and a half of sliced cherry tomatoes. I just sliced them right in half. Now over to our stove, I am browning one pound of ground beef and I'm going to obviously drain off the excess grease. And once that's done, I'm gonna add in my onions and tomatoes. We're gonna cook that for about three minutes or until the tomatoes start to burst a little bit. Of course, season that up with a little salt and pepper. Um, there's no really rhyme or reason to how much salt and pepper I use when I first start seasoning. I kind of just season as I go. And we're going to use a packet of sazon. I absolutely love this seasoning. It enhances any Spanish dish, really. So just give that a good stir. Add in your garlic. Always add in your garlic after all of the other veggies have cooked down because it does have a tendency to burn. Now we're gonna add in one cup of tomato sauce and one cup of water, give that a good stir. And then we're also gonna add in two whole jalapeno peppers. This is actually gonna give it that little kick and it's gonna be so good when it's all done. And I added in one can of drained potatoes. You could use regular potatoes, but I just did not feel like waiting. So I like these fast recipes. And then we're adding in one whole bag of Spanish rice, the Nor Spanish rice. Give it a good stir, cover it up, cook it for about seven to eight minutes. And then I just topped it with some fresh cilantro. And this is what our dish came out like. I used one pepper each for my husband and I, and it gives it such good flavor. It's a mild flavor because it was cooked a little bit longer. And I actually just topped it with some cotilla cheese and this was amazing you guys came together in literally about 25 minutes and it was so good and definitely helped my craving for picadillo so moving right along with some more jalapenos <laughs> we're making jalapeno popper soup this warms you up for sure from the inside out. So I am going to be using about a third a cup of scallions that I diced off the white parts, kept the green parts, two jalapenos, one green bell pepper, and four cloves of minced garlic. And now I am going to use about 10 slices of bacon here. I just chopped that. This is a pretty fatty bacon, so we're not gonna add any oil or anything to our pot. We're just going to render the fat from this bacon. You will see in a second here that it had a lot of fat come off of it so I wound up draining just a little bit of it um, I wound up having about a third a cup altogether left um, in the pot after I removed the bacon to a paper towel lined plate and now we're going to cook up our scallions and our jalapeno peppers and season that with a little salt and pepper give that a good stir and cook that for about a minute to a minute and a half. Now we're gonna add in our garlic, give that a good stir, cook another minute and a half, and then use one third cup of flour. This is going to give it such a delicious, creamy base. Um, and then we're gonna add in four cups of chicken broth and one cup of whole milk. Give that a good stir, bring it to a simmer, let it simmer for about five minutes then we're going to add in about two cups of shredded chicken i made this the same way in my instant pot just shredded up some chicken super simple here i have eight ounces of cream cheese and i'm using a little bit of soup to kind of crush it because i'm not gonna lie I completely forgot to take it out of the fridge so i was just kind of improvising at this point Give that a good stir, of course, season to taste with salt and pepper. And then I have about a half a cup of the chopped bacon that I am putting inside of the soup and two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. This is the triple cheddar cheese and it was so good. Look how thick and creamy this soup looks. It's just amazing. So I served it with a little more scallions, some cheese, and the rest of the bacon. This is amazing, you guys. There is just 
Nothing quite like being warmed from the inside out with something like a jalapeno pepper. So for our final recipe, we'll be making easy apple pie. It's so good and I just love the way the house smells when you're making apple pie. So I am going to be peeling, coring, and slicing six Granny Smith apples. I love using Granny Smiths in any kind of apple pie recipe. Just drizzle that with a little lemon juice. This way it prevents browning on the apples. Um, and now we're going to season it up with one teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and a half a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of cornstarch. Give that a really good mix. And then we're gonna add in three quarters of a cup of regular sugar. Mix that up so everything is nice and well combined. And I will be using these pie crusts again because why the heck not? It makes life so much easier. So um, I'm going to be spraying a pie pan with some cooking spray. This way nothing sticks. And I'm just going to flatten this first layer right into the pan. Um, and then just spoon in all of your apples. part couldn't be easier just put on your second pie crust and pinch the sides together this way everything is sticking and it is closed um, and I kind of tried to do a design around the side but I am not a great baker so it is what it is I cut in three or four or five <laughs> coals there um, and then I just brushed this with some egg wash and all egg wash is is one egg with a tablespoon of water I baked that at 375 for 25 minutes and this is what it came out like I had this for Thanksgiving actually and I actually recorded this the day before Thanksgiving and it came out delicious it's so good those apples get nice and car caramelized it is just an amazing apple pie that's gonna do it for today's video you guys thank you so much for being here again i am sorry that you're not able to see my face but it is just better that you don't right now i just wanted to make sure that i get these videos out for you to give you inspiration for your next family meal thank you so much you guys for watching and i will see you in the next video